is Judy Clark with the Allegheny Journal and today we are speaking with Alexa Rose and she is a singer-songwriter who is performing tonight, that's Friday, October 25th at the Historic Stonewall Theater in downtown Clifton Forge. And Alexa, you are a native of the Allegheny Highlands. Yes, so I am. I'm so tickled that you're back Going here. Through. Yeah, um, me too. Now you grew up in Clifton Forge, is that correct? Yep, I did. On Lou Street. <laughs> Yeah, we talked about it. It's in my neighborhood, up on the heights. Yeah. And uh, you were a 19, excuse me, 2011 graduate of Allegheny High School, yes. correct? And I told you a little while ago, I remember you because I used to, uh, went to a couple of the musicals that the uh, <laughs> chorus put on, and you were in Cinderella, and I think you were Cinderella, were you not? I was. <laughs> <laughs> and you were also in, um, oh, what did I just say, in, Into the Woods, yeah. which was really enjoyable. Those so were you, such fun years. Oh, oh those, yeah. Those are really fun to watch. Yeah. And um, so you got some a little bit of mileage and, and that kind of thing and performing. And you were also, um, you graduated from Allegheny High School, went to Appalachian State, mm -hmm. and you graduated in 2015, is that correct? Yes. And you are now living in Black correct. Mountain, North yes, Carolina. Yes, I am. Okay. So now tell me a little bit about when you realized that you loved singing and that you had a special talent for it. Um, I always sang. I don't think there was really a moment when I you know, realized all I ever really knew was that I love to do it and makes me feel good and brings me joy. And, um, you know, I always sang growing up, mostly in private. And right. then <laughs> at a certain age, um, I would write songs on the piano and really fell in love with songwriting in my late teen years. Very cool. And were you a music major at Appalachian State? Is that correct? No, I actually majored in sustainable development. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. But you were exposed to um, what I guess I would call mountain music, old time country music, is that? Yeah, true? so I, I minored in Appalachian roots oh, okay. music, which, um, and you know, I, I grew up, I remember we always had the radio on to a country station, but um, hearing like old country music, regional styles and like old time music was something that really um, got in my ear when I moved to Western North Carolina and going to Appalachian State was obviously a big part of that because that's beginnings of many, many great traditional musicians like Doc Watson. Oh yeah, so. exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and so now you've kind of have found yourself in the music industry and we spoke a few minutes ago about how that, that's a tough industry to get into. Um, but how how yeah. have you managed to, to pull this off? Well, like I said when we were talking before, right. sometimes you just find yourself in it and you didn't really plan on it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I you know at a certain point I just really fell in love with songwriting and um, I figured out that I could book a show in a different state or somewhere that maybe I wanted to visit and um, that would be a way I could maybe make a little bit of gas money and go share my music and travel somewhere new and so I started doing that all the time and um, met a lot of wonderful people and through doing that got connected with uh, the folks I work with now who have helped me get a little further down the road. <laughs> um, and I think um, you won a songwriting contest mm -hmm. recently. Tell me a little bit about that. So earlier this year, um, I was lucky enough to win the Chris Austin Songwriting Contest, which is uh, a wonderful kind of tradition that happens at Merle Fest in North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. And um, yeah, it was a huge honor. Uh, a lot of people I look up to have kind of gone down that route. and entered and won that song writing contest over the years as well. So um, how would you uh, describe your your voice and your style of singing? Um, I mean genre wise uh, most people classify it as Americana mm -hmm. or folk or country music and Americana is really just a giant mashup of, of all the styles that kind of originate in this country and um, I I think when I moved to Western North Carolina, I I took a lot away from like the ballad singers and the the people who sing and they tell stories and there's so much expression in the way that they sing and um, it's not necessarily about sounding pretty or anything. It's just about like telling the story. Story, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, understand you have released an album recently, mm -hmm. and it's called. It's called Medicine for Living. Medicine for Living. Yeah. And uh, I want to read something. You you got a review in the Rolling Stone 
magazine, which just blows me away. You're up right up there with Miranda Lambert and some other <laughs> well-known country. Um, and the, the title of it was the 10 Best Country and Americana Songs to Hear Now, and your album is one of them. And I don't, ho hope you don't mind if I just read a little bit of this. What sure. It says, uh, the title track from Alexa Rose's upcoming debut is a swooning atmospheric ballad punctuated by guitarist Will Sexton's ghostly swells and Rose's woozy mountain woman voice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really so that was well. a very generous review. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of them. Mm -hmm. And this, this also it says, raised in Clifton Forge, Virginia, she writes and sings with the conviction of someone who spent night after night on the front porch, the Allegheny Mountains in the foreground, spinning details of the day's hardships into music. That's I, true. <laughs> it, is, it is so true. I, they, they really hit it on the nail on the head, and I think it's just crazy that Clifton Forge, Virginia, is mentioned in Rolling Stone magazine. So yeah. Thanks for putting <laughs> I it think on the you, map. So well, of course. And um, so, you, and you're on tour right now where do you go after tonight? Um, tomorrow night I'll be in Bristol Tennessee at the Paramount Center for the Arts with Chris oh, Knight sure. and um, then we have a few days off and then we head for a Northeast tour at the beginning of November which will be the first two weeks of November so Very cool. if you know cool. folks in in um, Philadelphia or New York or Boston or parts of Connecticut and Massachusetts will be so you're on the road around. quite a bit now yeah, sometimes try to balance it out. <laughs> Everything in moderation. <laughs> so um, your um, album is, uh, as we said, it's Medicine for Living, and are all of them original songs written by? You? Yes, that's they wonderful. are. Wow, mm -hmm. how about that? You must be so proud of. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, it's, but yeah, I, I am very happy and grateful for the work I've been able to do with other people in making this album and my label Big Little Mess that put it out and um, yeah I've always just written songs that's, that's it's kind of a somebody it's a it's an affliction <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any family members or friends that you grew up with that might be uh, here in attendance for your performance I hope so I would love to see them that would be, that would be my great. family has to come because <laughs> They have to support me, but nobody else has to, so we'll see. <laughs> That's what family is all about. Well, I, uh, congratulations on your success. And I think you. we also mentioned you were here earlier. You performed at the Historic yeah. Sonic Theater. We, we were here back in January of oh, okay. this year. Yeah, we came through with the band and did a show here. Oh, it was that recently. I didn't really yeah, I know, and it, it feels like it just happened. It's crazy well. how time goes by, but um, it was wonderful to see so many people is it's hard to get up here sometimes and it just really meant a lot that so many folks came out to that. Well, wonderful. Well, mm -hmm. congratulations on your success and your career and we wish you the best of luck and thanks for putting Clifton Forge on the map. I think that's really <laughs> Thank wonderful. Thank you, Judy. And um, look forward to seeing you. Thank you so much. You really as well. You, had, um, you said you didn't have a whole lot of music in your family, but you did have a great-grandfather who played guitar, is that correct? Yes, my great-grandfather, Alvy. Bill. He lived um, in Paint Bank and for a while he lived with Lester Flat, and they played music together for a time and then Lester went to Nashville and hit it big and I don't come from a very musical family so um, knowing that I had somebody who, who was really into it has always kind of inspired me I think. And uh, also we I know you mentioned earlier about your songwriting and uh, you were telling me about how what the process is for you as far as coming up with lyrics and, and music and what what did you tell me about being in the on your phone I think oh yeah just well it's two different things it's a wall of sticky notes with just what whatever idea has come to me that's on the wall and then the modern day method of writing down the song ideas is to record it on your iPhone. So if somebody ever gets a hold of my iPhone, it's going to be embarrassing because it's just a bunch of one-liners with, you know, the double chin angle when I'm driving <laughs> down the road. You're driving down the road, okay. We're, 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 stay please, don't, don't listen to that. Yeah. Um, well, well. That's so, um, and we mentioned earlier about your, your album is Medicine for Living, and will you have copies on sale? Um, yeah, tonight I will. I've got excellent. vinyl and I have CDs. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for talking to the Allegheny Journal this afternoon and uh, good luck with your career. It sounds like it's starting to take off. Really thank happy you. Thank you. you for having me. And uh, hopefully we'll have a good crowd tonight. Thank you so much. Thanks. Okay.